All right. Well, uh, let's get started then. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining our weekly uh, Purple WRT meeting. Um, uh, as always, the meetings are recorded. Uh, we, we it's, so we post them to YouTube, so people who aren't here can can kind of keep up and and see what's going on. Um, if you have any concerns, just uh, just talk to me after the meeting. Um, uh, Thomas, I think you are new, so uh, we normally do introductions when we have uh, new people here. Um, so, Thomas, would you like to uh, introduce yourself and you know what brought you here and and what your what your interests are? Thomas. Can can I, can anyone else hear Thomas or No, I can't, I can't hear him, Eric. No, okay. Um yeah, I guess Thomas has uh, some issues with his uh with his mic, I'm guessing. Um so it, we can um I guess we can move forward and uh we can kind of introduce ourselves since uh he is since he's new, uh, Thomas, uh, my name is Eric Schultz. I'm the uh, the um, community manager at Purple Foundation. Um, I also am contracted to work on some of the board farm, um, a prototype um, for uh, making it remotely accessible to you know somewhat untrusted parties and uh, some of the uh, the challenges in fixing that. Um, so uh, would uh, Mikal, would you like to introduce yourself? Mikal? Hmm. Hauke? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, you can hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, Yes, I'm Hauke Mertens. I'm working for Intel and I'm also active in the Open WRT project as one of the core developers. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Kathy, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. This is Kathy Jory. I used to be at Qualcomm Atheros and now I'm working for Arduino.org, um, basically uh, U.S. operations and coordination with the rest of the, the world. Thank you. And Art? This is Art Swift, president of the Purple Foundation. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you. Um, it, I hope that uh, that helped you, Thomas. And, uh, and if, you know, if your mic starts working, uh, just, just jump in and, and don't hesitate to, uh, to introduce yourself and get, and, uh, get involved. Um, Next thing's uh, board farm status. Uh, my prototype work, I am pretty much, it's functionally uh, pretty much complete. I can complete uh, the daily test uh, just fine. Um, there were a few bugs that I had to work out. Now it's really um, moving it uh, back, uh, getting some of the some of the stuff upstreamed and uh, getting it into a state that, uh, you know, it's reusable by other people. Um, but it is, uh, it's, it's working perfect right now for the actual tests. So i um, very happy about that. Uh, a lot of, I think it's a lot of good work. Um, other things I want to bring up about board farm. Um, there were some discussions that I, that have either been uh, on the issues page or um, I had gotten an email. One email I had gotten um, about a potential feature is the discussion of like, a more complex, uh, I, I don't know if topology is the right word, I think it is, uh, for board farm. Uh, when you look at the, the board farm um, executable, it has a very clear sense of there's a WAN and a LAN and uh, maybe a wireless LAN and in some of those types of things, but it doesn't have like more arbitrary designs. One of the use cases that someone had had was well, you need to contact a bunch of different devices. I, I, he didn't really have a number, but I, I understood it as a fairly significant 
number to uh, do stuff for like Bluetooth testing on the DUT, which is the device under test. So that would be in place of traditionally the router. Um, so I had mentioned that you know if you could make the median be great, but but I think I think this is a kind of thing that um, there's probably this was brought up early on. And, but we never have gotten to the point where we were like, okay, we need to address this. And now that there are people who have this use case, I think this is something that should be addressed um, and we should discuss it. Uh, just kind of how, how would this work? How do we not break uh, use cases that already exist? Um, and how do we make this you know, still relatively simple for people to be involved? Um, so I, I don't know if there's any discussion about that, but just uh, kind of want to put that in everybody's radar. Um, and uh, I, hopefully we can, we can find some other parties that are interested in this. Um, another one that had come up, the, the issue of, of passing in parameters to the tests. Uh, currently the tests, um, whether they pass or not, is very much um, hard coded. Uh, there isn't, as far as I've been able to, I don't think there's any test where you can say, okay, if I, let's say for a performance test, if I don't get uh, X megabits per second, I want to say that the test failed. Um, there's nothing like that. If there is something like that, it's hard coded. So um, in some use cases, you may want a different parameter and that would be nice to do. Um, I think that's a, that also is a really good feature, um, but... Uh, it's definitely it's something that will need to be discussed and you know uh, how how folks actually want to go about uh, implementing that so that it's that it's uh, straightforward to use and doesn't cause people any other issues that already exist so a lot of good discussion um, a few contributions this week a few merge pull requests so uh, still uh, I think we're doing real good uh, anyone else have any have any thoughts on on board farm or any of this uh, these discussions? Uh, Eric, can yep. you hear me? I can. Uh, this is Dennis. Okay, so now my micro microphone is working. Uh, okay. Maybe. So I maybe I, I uh, start my introduce uh, my introducing. Please do. Uh, so yes, um, as maybe Kathy knows knows me already. Uh, I'm from uh, Devolo in Germany. Mm -hmm. And we just uh, um, released uh, a few new uh, Wi-Fi um, access points on the CBIT uh, two weeks ago. And okay. uh, they, they are based on OpenWRT. And uh, just a week ago, I heard about uh, Purple WRT. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm very interested in it. And uh, we, I, w I want to see uh, what's going on uh, here. And uh, so to work together and to see... Uh, how how w, open wrt is is uh, going further awesome that's great well thank you thomas i'm gl glad you got the microphone working and and we're glad to have you here i'd love to I'd love to learn more about the the devices and uh, anything else you can share so yeah lovely okay. awesome that's great uh, anything else on this before moving forward well maybe um, maybe Eric, you want to just mention that uh, one of the ideas, you know, for Devolo or other uh, manufacturers of devices is that you can get your boards into the board farm and have them constantly tested against trunk, you know, on a daily basis, essentially. Yes, uh, that's it, it's probably good to mention that one of the ideas that we've had was the idea of um, purple would would host a, uh, a a set of these board farms or, or one board farm with a bunch of these different uh, devices and then run tests against trunk every day. Um, and then that would be public and, and people would have a sense of how, if you've had problems or, you know, the likelihood that the, that it works with trunk and things like that. So it, it kind of be a, a service to uh, the members of purple in the community and, and things like that. Right, so, because, um, yeah. So they didn't know that they can go with the bleeding edge trunk, and it was still, it, you know, it will still run on various devices. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Yes. Awesome. And, yeah, definitely. And Eric, 
I think you know that uh, Bical, we have a, one of the new Bical boards here marked for the board farm as well. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, we will. We'll, I think I, that's great. I, I know that the, the, the guys involved in the CI 40 were very interested too. So I think we're going to very quickly have a, have a, uh, a growing set of, of, of boards. So that's going to be pretty cool. I think. Uh, hi, Thomas. Uh, I haven't really gotten it. Uh, for which company are you working? Um, hi, I'm working uh, for Devolo, uh, which is a company in Germany, and uh, we are located here in Aachen. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, we will go on uh, to our our next next uh, parts of the. Uh, of the agenda, um, funding open WRT projects. This was, we were kind of just waiting on, on the discussion with art. I, I don't know, has that moved forward at all art? Well, I was at least able to uh, catch up with Hauke uh, a couple days ago. And so we had a first discussion, still waiting to uh, talk to John and some of the uh, other folks. But okay. I do want to say uh, there, has been a proposal, not a proposal yet, but an idea uh, from both uh, Hauke and Luca that uh, may be continuing work on the um, CTM, CTM, CWMP, uh, free CWMP project, or uh, also known as the TR69 client. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, that would make a, a great project that uh, where there's already work been done by the Open WRT core community, uh, but there's still some additional work to be done, and I'm sure Halki could comment more on it. And that would also be of uh, clear interest to some of the uh, downstream customers who want to leverage Open WRT for PPE equipment. Uh, so at this point, it's just an idea, but it's the first uh, idea that's been sourced from the community. Halki, do you want to comment any more on that? Uh, yeah, it depends on how we want to target it. So the uh, TR69 stuff and so on is um, um, yeah not so interested for the, the hackers community, but only interested normally only interesting for the um, device manufacturer. So like TR69, you you probably you basically need it when you want to build a DSL gateway and sell it to ISPs. Um, and the cable has similar things, and for GPON there are similar, different protocols, but they are doing more or less the same stuff. Um, yeah, it depends on, so currently I see there are some problems in the communication of purpose, this is community um, going on. So it would probably be, yeah, it depends on if you want to uh, yeah, have a better, better reaction in the community, it would be probably better to, to start with something uh, which the normal hacker community is interested in, uh, so which is not only focused on um, yeah, what, what the vendor wants. So, yeah, it, it depends on how you want to do, mm -hmm. what this uh, well, funding program should be in the end. If it should be... Um, Funding the interest what the vendor wants, then you should communicate it like this. Or if you want to fund um, some project which uh, is the the hackers community interested in. Yeah, that was a good discussion that Halke and I had on um, Wednesday, or Tuesday, or Wednesday. Basically, awesome. the idea that I put forth is we wanted to do both. We wanted to find projects that were of interest to the hacker community, and we also wanted to find projects that were of interest to the downstream customers who might be leveraging OpenWRT and might be uh, purple uh, members. So anyway, that's just the first idea that was put forth. I, I still welcome other ideas from the community on uh, projects of general hacker interest to the community. So um, that's got all the reports. So nothing formal yet, just that one idea has been put forth. Yeah, I, I think that I think that's great. Um, and and it, it may have just been a, a on, to be quite honest, on my part, that was not well communicated because you know what you're describing as as the um, 
idea of a project being, you know, meeting both needs to me, that that's exactly the kind of things I was thinking of. So yeah, absolutely. We, that's, uh, um, I can work with Kathy and Hauke and we can, we can talk about how we can better communicate some of these things. Um, but that's great to hear. That, that sounds like a very good project and, and uh, has a lot of potential. So awesome. Um, anything else you want to talk about with that? Or, um, well, if anybody else at the meeting has uh, any other ideas they'd like to put forth for projects, I mean, they're, they're most welcome. Um, oh, absolutely. So what what are the next steps then with moving forward? Um, do we still need to coordinate a, a, a committee to sort of bring the process forward? Uh, I'm still planning to have the conversation with uh, some of the core developers that Hauke and I were referencing. Uh, so hopefully that'll happen in the next few days. I want to make sure I understand, uh, you know, their perspective before formally moving forward. But I, I really do want to encourage people to put their ideas forth to Eric on projects that would benefit the community so that we can really begin this process. Okay, so we can start soliciting ideas already and we just have to make sure we've got uh, same point of reference of what this is all about within the core team and out on the inside and the outside. Yeah. Sounds good. Exactly. Yep. Awesome. That's great. That is great. All right. Well, I mean, it, it, if you have ideas that are, you know, you know, don't, don't hesitate to, to let me know, um, or, or Kathy or art or anyone here. Um, uh, regulatory update, uh, not a whole lot going on, um, kind of quiet. Uh, there's, um, there was a mention in the security um, peg about uh, the FCC um, rejecting certification based upon um, the general security of a device, not, not related to the radio. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, I couldn't find anything about that, but it, it's more of a, I, I may just have been looking in the wrong place, um, but uh, the so yeah, Eric, the, comp the company was TP Link, as I recall. It was TP Link. Okay, I will look some more at TP Link um, and see, if, see if, if I can want. find it right now. Yeah, definitely. You're not, you not talking about the case with um, the FTC uh, forced ASLs to do security audits for the next 20 years because uh, their system were not secure and um, they had lots of problems in there and they are not allowed to market the system as secure anymore. No. This is yeah. a different one. This is faced with FCC regulations and router capabilities. TP links blocks open source updates. Well, that we knew about. That, that was that, that was March March twelfth, right? Yes, that uh, yeah, that we knew about, but that was that had to do with the radio. Their argument was that it was that's how they had to comply with the radio requirements that the FCC right. has has done. Um, but I think that's I think that that's what uh, okay. the people in the security team were referring to. At least that was my understanding. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then we're on the same page. Then we were just talking about saying it different ways. But yes, that that's generally um, that was something that that um, is uh, has kind of been out there and. I discussed it a bit at uh, at Libre Planet. So those who uh, weren't weren't here or didn't know about it, I was at Libre Planet and spoke on on the topic of the of the FCC and these regulations. There was a lot of good discussion. Um, obviously, the people at Libre Planet, it's, as a Free Software Foundation event, are going to be some of the more um, radical on uh, on software freedom, um, which is which is not bad, but you know, it's a different different mesh than than say we might get, or or uh, you might get in other areas. But uh, a lot of good discussion about the ways to handle this. Um, there are some potential. Uh, I don't want to get too uh, too ahead, but I do have a reason to think that there may be a legal case involved in this um, because there are some concerns about the broadness of the rule and how it affects. So, um, but that is just more very preliminary and I'm not even in technically involved in that. It's just kind of through the grapevine kind of thing. So, 
we will see if how that moves forward. So that's about it for regulatory. Uh, Open WRT Summit. Uh, I emailed Kathy um, um, an inv the, the proposed invitation to send out to the community to join the uh, planning committee. Um, the planning committee would really be responsible for the uh, for you know deciding when the event is, uh, deciding on sessions. Where do we want to? do the event do we want to have it associated with elc kind of just all those general things um it's not going to be a huge uh a huge time commitment i don't think for the planning committee um because as as i see it and, and as i think is feasible i i think the purple staff or or would be very much uh, involved in a lot of that some of the heavy lifting involved in that like you know getting the agreements signed and and figuring out some of those details but more just a, a sign of direction on on what needs to happen um that's how i for, i foresee it so um kathy sent me back her edits and i think we will uh send it out then uh probably right after this meeting uh any other thoughts or other topics we'd like to discuss I just uh, have a, I just have a comment to regulatory uh, thingy. Uh huh. Uh, I just uh, recently uh, was told by one of my colleagues that a uh, similar rule is about to take uh, effect in June in Europe. Yes, yes. Uh, that that yeah. That's that has been on the radar. Um, the European rule is even more confusing because it seems to imply that. The requirement is that uh, you would have to you have to prevent modifications to the radio, but not not um, not prevent interoperability, which is a little bit of a strange way to phrase things because they seem to be inconsistent. Um, but yes, yeah, that that is another another angle to this. Um, so. So for the European ruling, um, the ruling from the EU is not legally binding, so it's, um, it has to be put into local law of uh, each, Europe, of each um, country of the um, European Union, and um, they put it into real law that uh, act actually um, uh, affects anyone. But the EU um, can push can yeah, push charges um, if the if the member uh, countries are not doing this. So this could also result in lots of different interpretations and <laughs> lots of different uh, um, laws um, for each um, country, which are all more or less the same. But yeah, let's see how the same they are in the end. The I thought that this was uh, some rule for certification for CE thingy. This is a uh, national, uh, uh, this is national level certification as well. I thought that uh, CE was European level certification. I don't know on which level the certification is um, done, but the uh, legal part is uh, national level. So there is uh, in, in Germany the, the Bundesnetzagentur is working on um and the, the the german ministry i don't know exactly which is um, responsible for this uh, they are working on uh, the german version of this um, law and probably all the other european countries are doing the same it could be that they are all pretty much the same but it could be different so nobody i don't know if it's uh, already in public uh, the uh, each of the national versions of this Hmm. Wow, that that just sounds like it's going to be a a a big mess to deal with. But well, um, yeah, it it kind of brings up the fact that there really needs to be a a, a, a international standard given given this how complex this is getting. Um, but uh. So yeah, well, thank you, Mikal and 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 Hauke for uh, you know providing the 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 European side of this. 
Um, anything else? All right. Well, um, I uh, thank you everyone for coming. Our next meeting is is our, our standard time at uh, at um, nine a.m. Pacific, uh, at, and the date is uh, the seventh, April seventh. So, um, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, don't hesitate to uh, to comment on the mailing list or or uh, or anything like that, or uh, comment on the board farm or anywhere else. So, thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.